Hello and welcome back to another episode. Indeed, welcome back to the living room. The dog is relaxing on the couch and today I'm very much in the mood to share with you my love of Where's Wally. Where's Wally and, and the whole series of books that, that followed the 1987 original are undoubtedly one of my favourite children's book series of all time. And frankly, you know, I mean, they're, they're one of my favourite book series of all time. I still read Where's Wally books today. Diving into the, 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 the adventures that Wally has, has is always and has always been a pleasure. And, and I'm not alone. You know, since, since uh, 1987, 31 years, I guess, uh, uh, there, there have been 67 million Where's Wally books sold in more than 25 different languages. So Wally has an international appeal, but, but also a very intimate appeal. We all feel strongly connected to, to Where's Wally and his adventures and our, and our adventures in the little worlds that he visits. And, and this was beautifully summarised in a, a quote that I came across the other day, where a journalist was, just, was trying to sort of summarise the appeal uh, of the books by saying that they are maddeningly simple. Yeah, you know, the artwork is straightforward and clean and crisp, and in some ways they do look very much like children's books, but they are also simply maddening, in so much as once you start to engage with the images, even if you don't necessarily look for Wally, oh, there he is, um, you will start to, to, to notice humour and story, and then you'll be drawn into searching for things, the, the checklists at the end of the books and this kind of thing, uh, that, that you become slightly obsessed. And in that way, it's no wonder that Wally is a global phenomenon. He appeals to, uh, to us on so many levels, uh, but in particular uh, to, uh, to us all on a very personal level. And this book is in fact my personal first ever Where's Wally book. Uh, I picked this up well, I picked this up, my, my mum picked this up for me from a bookshop in Crewe, uh, back in 1992, I think. And I remember seeing the artwork first and foremost. Uh, as you might expect, this book cover grabbed my attention. The, the blue, the density of the, of the drawings, all the different people on there. And even at this point in the early 90s, uh, Where's Wally was a, an international bestseller, but I didn't know what Wally was. What Wally was? What? <laughs> Who was what wears Wally? What is what? what? <laughs> no, I'm not, not going to go down that road. But I didn't know who wears Wally was. I didn't know what the wears Wally books were. <laughs> um, and uh, I simply wanted to, to, to know more about this book here that I saw on the shelf. But it was out of my reach for some reason. It was up on a high shelf. And I'll come back to that in just a moment. I think I know why that might have been. But anyway, uh, thankfully, my mum was 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 uh, lovely enough to, to to get me and my brother uh, this this book. And in fact, you can see inside that we both signed our names. Walker Books. Uh, this Walker book belongs to sorry Paul and Mark. Boom, uh, boom with two bombs for O's. Of course, that that was very us. That's very early nineties us. <laughs> um, but but it you know it, of course. Of course, uh, we loved this book, and we loved this book primarily because of the artwork. I I've said in, in other videos on this, this YouTube channel that I always appreciate little worlds that I can inhabit, whether that's Skyrim, whether it's uh, the, the island on, um, on Game Boy and Link's Awakening, whether it's a, a Choose Your Own Adventure book, or whether it is, in this case, an intricately drawn uh, little little realm that Wally is visiting. Now, um, the artwork is is excellent, and Martin Handford, the author and artist, uh, and I'll come back to him in a moment as well, uh, is is clearly extraordinarily skilled. But but despite the the seemingly universal appeal of the imagery, imagery, colourful, humorous, accessible, uh, entertaining, uh, th th this book had a sort of a, a, a bit of notoriety as well. And that's because of the beach scene. If we go to the beach, the spot on the artwork for the original beach um, that, 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 that got the Where's Wally books into trouble in the United States. There's this little tow rag here who's sticking an ice cream into a lady's back. Uh, she's sunbathing and she goes, ah, revealing a little bit of side boobage, shall we say. Now, I didn't spot that as a kid, 
and if I did, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. And uh, uh, <laughs> and actually, and, and frankly, also apparently, there's another element in the campsite where um, some of the kids have have come across a a man who's uh, getting changed. They open the door and go, ha 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 ha, look at him. And as a kid, I'd have gone, oh yeah, ha ha ha, look at him. There was nothing nefarious in that in that artwork. And and I think in that sense, th this artwork is and was. Um, was was quite innocent and naive but it got it got a little bit of got some parents backs up apparently and that might be why this book was high up on the shelf in the bookstore perhaps there'd been some memo about the boob in, on the beach who knows who cares who cares all i know all i knew is that i loved the artwork in these books and bit to bit i felt as though i was getting to know the author's sense of humor i remember one day thinking to myself i wonder if at the airport he's got on the runway people jogging or people running along and sure enough I went to the airport and there we go uh, we have some people running along on the airport and in fact we have a plane with wings <laughs> we have an ace pilot in the uh, in the uh, the biplane there this this book has uh, a slightly naff sense of humor but a sense of humor that I very much appreciated as a kid and still appreciate now. Each double page spread is a, a new destination on Wally's holiday. He's sending us postcards from the different places that he's visiting and wherever he visits, there's an element of chaos, certainly quite a crowd surrounding him. And, and this book just entertains my brother and I endlessly. We simply couldn't get enough. Uh, and in fact, when I learned fairly quickly as a kid that there was more than one Where's Wally book out there, I uh, had to get my hands on Where's Wally now. Uh, this is probably my favorite Wally book and that, that really is borne out by the fact that it's in quite bad condition. The back cover is slightly torn, it's very delicate in, in how it feels in the hands. It's a little bit sun damaged from, from far too many days sat on a sunny uh, car seat on, uh, on long uh, journeys. Uh, but this, therefore, is my favourite book. It's also a very clever book. Where's Wally Now? A great follow-up title to Where's Wally, but also it, it tells you something about the theme of this book. The theme being time travel. Uh, in each and every scene in Where's Wally Now, Wally is travelling to a different historical time period. Um, and, and this one, you can tell it was my favourite because, well, I've scrubbed out my brother's name <laughs> and just left mine in the front there. Hmm. Uh, but we, yeah, so we have Wally traveling to all these different time periods. Uh, we begin, for example, you know, in the Stone Age or whatever. Uh, I say that, sorry, as an archeologist, the, the Stone Age is a com complicated concept. And um, we move on to ancient Egypt. And, and this, this, this image here, these two pages here are f as familiar to me as my own face. That I, that there's no, I, I don't. That that's not hyperbole. This 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 book was so special to me. It was such an obsession to me as a kid that that I remember looking at every single inch of this image, thinking about how they were constructing the pyramids. I appreciated all of the little details that were in here in terms of the the the, the physical nature of this this environment. But also all the jokes, the paint being um, splattered here, the pyramid being upside down. The, the, it's, just, it's just brilliant. This, this image in particular is probably, probably my favorite Wally, uh, Wally illustration. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm struggling for words because this, 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 this image, it's very special to me. Um, but anyway, the whole book is brilliant. We, we, go, we go to Rome, uh, we have the Vikings, on tour and um, and look you can see see some repairs were necessary on the book you can see some tape here slightly yellowed again because it's quite old uh, cello tape um i just oh, i just love the where's wally books they're just they're just magnificent well this this one yeah this one this one's a little bit crusty now the tape um wasn't the probably wasn't the best fix <laughs> With the third Wally book, Where's Wally and the Fantastic Journey, uh, 
Wally was opened up and out in some respects. He was no longer simply traveling from place to place as a holiday maker or from time to time on our world, but rather he was traveling from from world to world, from, from bizarre place to bizarre place. And in order to facilitate that uh, in this slightly sun-bleached copy of, of Where's Wally, um, Martin Hanford introduced a new character, uh, Wizard Whitebeard. So on every page you have to find Wally, the wizard, and also a single scroll. Uh, again, I love how at the beginning of this book there's absolutely no pretense that this may well be a book that my brother and I have to share to Mark A from Wally and Wilma. Apparently they sent me this book. Uh, but also, apparently, Wally and Mark own this book. <laughs> so I'm very much identifying myself with, well, Wally's my friend, my friend. Back off, brother. <laughs> uh, I am a Wally watcher, little Wally scarf there, and uh, uh, not so much a maze, but like a, a long and deeply inconvenient corridor for Wally to travel through. As I seem to have drawn here in Byro. Uh, at least I was trying, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so in this in this this book, the the possibilities literally became endless. And Martin Hanford opened up uh, worlds uh, for for Wally to explore. I love this one where you have the fire and the water monks um, elemental sort of uh, disagreement at the very least. Uh, occurring uh, across this whole whole planet seemingly uh, this one here always sticks in my mind the flying the carpet flyers sorry uh, and I love how the artist flips things on on their heads uh, a little bit like the the people running on the runway we have here uh, uh, carpets riding people as though they are they're a carpet a flying carpet we have um, uh, someone who's taken up taken off accidentally in a, in a in a tower like it's a rocket um, it, it's it's the same sort of visual witticisms. The the the, uh, the, the little zebra crossing here uh, from building to building. It is simply magnificent. I love this. The great ball game. What is the what are the rules of this board game? I spent hours trying to figure out what on earth these guys were trying to achieve. And the only thing I, I can I can presume is that um that 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 that. that, that everyone's out for themselves each team's out for themselves i mean so that's it when wally and the wizard whitebeard came to the playing field of the great ball game players uh, where many wallies had been before um wally saw that four teams were playing against each other but any was anyone winning uh, what was the score can you work out the rules indeed can you work out the rules um when uh, then wally found the fourth scroll and continued on with his journey so so i can only presume that, that you have Four different teams that are, tr that are competing. You have maybe the ability to, to, to take someone else's ball and chuck it down the hole. Uh, but then again, they got a guy in blue dropping a blue ball. I, I don't know. I just don't know. But it kept me enthralled. And uh, and again, this book was very well loved. You can see the tape running down the middle there. More tape there. And oh, ah, oh, the deep sea divers. I, this this may be my second favourite Where's Wally image. The density of this is just crazy. I mean, the, the fact that you have fish here making a giant fish to try and scare off would-be fishermen. You have a sea lion with a lion's head. You see more Martin Hanford humour. I I just, I love it. And the thing is, I could keep on, I could, oh, 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 look, sorry, look, there's a boat here where the deck is a deck of cards. <laughs> Maybe this is partly where I got some of my humor from. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Um, basically, I, I could I could keep on just saying over and over again, I love Where's Wally. That kind of goes without saying. But uh, but I think what, what makes Wally so special and so, so um, uh, particularly special for me is the way that it, it it's always been a little escape, a little uh, a little world away from, uh, well, the, the 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 world that surrounds me, whether that world is good or bad, happy or sad. This has always been a little sort of pocket, a place where I could go and just just indulge all these questions, such as what what are the rules of the great ball game. 1993 saw the release of Where's Wally in Hollywood, and I can't guarantee. I got this book in 1993, but this is a book from then, so I'm not quite sure how and when I picked it up. 
But this is a very, uh, a very important Where's Wally book because, well, first of all, it formally introduces uh, a character to the world of Wally that, that that deeply confused me, and this character is Oddlaw, the guy in black and yellow. Now, uh, Oddlaw technically first appears in, I think, uh, the poster book, Where's Wally the poster book. Uh, so does, I think, a character called Wilma, who is Wenda's sister, twin sister, in fact, and there's Wenda here. Um, it's all a bit confusing, and apparently Wally has been out with both of them. <laughs> He's been romantically linked with both of, the, both of those twins. But anyway, Oddlaw uh, confused me, because the Oddlaw is Waldo backwards. And at this point, I had just about picked up that, that in other places, Wally is known by different names, and in the US, he's known as Waldo. Uh, that, coupled with the fact that this book is, you know, Wally goes to Hollywood, or Wally in Hollywood, it really reinforced to me, at the time, that, that the author, Martin Hanford, is probably American. And it was only recently that I learned that actually he's British. He is born in London, I think he still lives in London, don't hold me to that, but I think he does. And uh, and that that actually this book isn't uh, a book reinforcing his Americanness, but rather reinforcing the inspiration behind these crowds that he's always loved to draw. Uh, I I recently came across an interview where he talked about his favourite um, uh, Wally scene, and that it comes from this book, and that is uh, a tremendous song and dance. This is the author's favorite Wally uh, scene. Because he was deeply inspired by those classic grand scale epic musicals that he was seeing in the cinema growing up, coming out of Hollywood. The density of people on screen, the the choreographing that was required, uh, the choreography, sorry, that was required to get people to do things on cue, and also all the different stories that unfolded in those movies inspired the artist to create Wally, not Waldo. So, there, so uh, there's, there is a bit of a confusion, or there was a bit of a confusion uh, uh, as a kid. I thought that maybe Wally was American, but I'm happy to say Wally is British. But globally, actually, Wally Waldo is known by lots of different names. I've actually made some notes here. Uh, in Germany, he's known as uh, Volta. Uh, in France, he's known as Charlie, or Charlie, I guess. Uh, in Vietnam, he's known as Van Lang. In uh, Lithuania, he's known as Jonas or Jonas. And in, in Italy, he's known as Ubaldo. <laughs> so, so actually, that confusion, I imagine, is is also actually quite universal. I imagine from place to place uh, in the world, people have a different sense of what Wally should be, and uh, and and what you know, what how we should be referring to him. But anyway, uh, Oddlaw came into the frame as uh, as the the villain, and he was also at this stage a, vi a villain that I was seeing in the cartoons. I remember very fondly watching and re-watching the VHS tapes of the Where's Wally cartoons, uh, and that theme tune, brilliant. Hit it, Where's Wally? Where's Wally? Did you say him? Where's Wally? Where, 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 where's Wally? Where, 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 where's Wally? Where's Wally? Where, 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 where's Wally? Did you say him, huh? Where's Wally? Where's Wally? Where? Where? Where's Wally? Where's Wally? There he is. I also remember being really fascinated by the character of Wizard Whitebeard in the cartoons as this sort of very laid back Californian kind of surfer type wizard, you know, dude, the dude, I guess. <laughs> I'll tell you, women love me, you know, I don't know what it is, you know, oh, I'll tell you, it could be the dancing, oh, I'll tell you. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, hey, it's your invitation to my party. 
and times are wasted. <laughs> I'll tell you, hey, let's boogie. Lombarda for everyone. Ooh. Again, just brilliant. The whole, all of this, I just love. I love. I love. The fact that I, that I got to grow up with Where's Wally, it, it's just fantastic. This scene is probably my favourite scene in the Hollywood book because it implies that black and white movies were filmed by painting everything black and white. Even the fire <laughs> was apparently painted black and white. Um, and uh, and you have the the crew and the the the, 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 the cameras and the directors. Everyone else is in is in colour. Obviously, this is again. This is a, a wonderful play on, on, on the artist's love of classic Hollywood, and the fact that that that, that, that these movies were were um were giving us a sense of the past that was black and white. I remember actually at one point, I think one of my uh, my aunts um, saying to me that, that she grew up thinking that the world was black and white when her parents were children because of film, and so maybe that that's that's Martin Hansford's comment on that, the idea that somehow maybe they were painting everything black and white. Uh, here we have, a, 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 again, another epic laid out, very much in the in the sort of the vein of, of, I don't know, the Ten Commandments or, you know, like a Troy type movie. Um, this this book, in some respects, or well, not even in some respects, this book, I, I suspect, is absolutely the most revealing book as far as the artist's motivations go. He's clearly loving, indulging this sort of the Hollywood glamour. And, and also I really like this one as well because this, this book came out uh, in and around uh, the, the time that the that, that, that genies were becoming popular amongst kids, you know, so for example, in Aladdin, this kind of thing. So, so I really like the fact that you've got all these genies here competing for us. You've got a, a fake genie there, a Hollywood genie, make cut out of wood and then you've got some proper genies in the background, all this sort of stuff. It's just, it's just brilliant. I love it. And here we have another classic Martin Handford pun. This one really sticks with me. And that is the Pie on Ear Saloon. Pie on Ear Saloon. <laughs> Apparently it takes eight weeks for Martin Handford to draw each scene. Uh, so here we have the swashbuckling musketeers and he, he, he drew this or drew, draws them all from left to right populating it as he goes uh, and therefore actually there was a, a mathematician who came up with a, a sort of formula a visual formula for the for the the best route to take on the page when you're trying to find Wally uh, so actually that, that maybe there's something in that in in the way that that, that Hanford draws from left to right and, and and fills out the narrative and the story and the jokes and the, and the characters as he goes that that means that actually there is this sort of maybe even subconscious placement of Wally in the imagery it's uh, it's it, it again. It's it, it's the the patience of the artist uh, and the skill that's always fascinated me. I I wish I could draw this intricately and this well. Well, I probably could, but I just need a lot of patience. A lot of patience. Towards the end of Where's Wally in Hollywood, we get this sort of ode to to when the stars come out, sort of. Oscar night or maybe a movie premiere this kind of thing and I always appreciated this this image as a child but now knowing what I know about the author and his love of, of, of Hollywood and, and, and the movies this is clearly him him reflecting on that movie magic uh, but as a kid I always found this fascinating how <laughs> how uh, this this pink limousine bends around, <laughs> around the bend like it's made of bubble gum or something uh, uh, and also, actually, in each and every Where's Wally book, I always had a bit of a crisis as to whether or not I was going to actually physically tick or find everything and then tick everything off in the, in the lists at the back of the book. In every Where's Wally book, there is there is a list, or there are lists of things to find. And um, for the most part, you can see I've, I think I have taken the time to find them all. In some places, sadly, I've ticked with pen, which is not good. Uh, but I remember with the earlier books, having much more of a, uh, I suppose a bit more of a crisis as to whether or not I should draw in a book. Uh, it was it was a very powerful idea, the idea of actually ticking things off in books. And so that's the second one. And with the first Where's Wally book, 
nothing has been ticked at all. And I'm not surprised. I think when I was when I was a, a fairly young kid, it was just a matter of you don't draw in books. You can't draw in books, so I just didn't draw in books. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's a, it's a, it's a thing which again, as you'll know if you watch this channel for a while, which I continue to struggle with the idea of, of making use of uh, of books and and perhaps you know, especially when they're single use items, should I or shouldn't I? But clearly with Where's Wally uh, in Hollywood, uh, I had no such qualms using a pencil on the tick list. Now, with that tendency in mind, I have actually challenged myself in the past couple of weeks. I, I picked up the Where's Wally coloring book, actually from a charity shop, and it's completely pristine. Whoever owned this before me hasn't colored it in at all. I mean, there are, there are colors uh, which are part of the print, so on some pages they choose some key accent colors, like the color of fire there, for example. Uh, but uh, whoever owned this before me clearly had the same problem in terms of the idea of getting it wrong somehow and therefore ruining the book. But this is an opportunity for me to, to challenge that and to actually dive in and enjoy colouring in, engaging with this artwork in that way. Uh, and, and in that sense, the Wes Wally colouring book is an opportunity to, to, to live out that fantasy of, if not actually drawing the, uh, the artwork, at the very least choosing some of the colours. Um, I really appreciate how, how in this book these images are, uh, are both familiar and also tweaked versions of things that we've seen in the past. For example, this uh, image here, this pirate's cove, where you've got all these pirates in a, in a cave, is actually a section of, of, a, of, of uh, a scene from Where's Wally in Hollywood, um, which is uh, actually... Uh, Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. So the film set for that is actually uh, providing the inspiration for this section of artwork here. So you can see the, the, the sky there in the background. Uh, this guy here is like a chest of drawers with a holding a fire pot and with a fire pot on his tongue, this sort of statue. Well, he's here, just here. So this sort of, this area here has, has become a pirate's cove. For, for, for you to try and colour in. I, I appreciate that, that, that Martin Hanford and the publishers continue to play with the artwork. And this is a trend that's continued right up to the 30th anniversary uh, edition of the original Where's Wally book. This was published last year. And well, first of all, it highlights something that I love about Martin Hanford's artwork, and that is this furry black line that's a they're probably an artifact actually of the ink on the paper that he uses but the, 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 this this style is just so um so familiar to me i just, I just love it uh, but actually in this book what they've done is they've uh, they, they've added uh first of all odd law wizard white beard wender and woof to find on every page uh, they weren't in the original version of, of this first wally book and uh, they've added a um uh uh, a new uh, a new mix of colors and also a whole host of new items and the 25 Wally watchers who appeared in later Where's Wally books into the into these scenes they've added an additional scene at the end of the book which is actually the first scene but with completely different uh, completely different contents so there's an aeroplane a dinosaur <laughs> that stuff isn't in that first first scene there in some respects, I have come full circle. Uh, in fact, here is that beach scene that caused so much controversy with the original publication. And now the lady is in fact wearing uh, her, uh, her bikini top. So no side boobage 30 years on. Much, I think, you know, much, much, much to the worst. It's a bit of a shame is that. Uh, but actually at the end of the book, there is in fact a letter from Wally himself. Uh, to my Wally fans around the world, Thank you for joining me on my amazing adventures. Destination here, there, and everywhere is my motto. <laughs> uh, search for amusement and wonder wherever you go. Happy hunting, Wally. And what what a wonderful way to round off 30 years of Where's Wally. Uh, and in some some respects, really reinforce the joy that, that, that he's brought to my life and to so many people's lives around the world. Search for amusement and wonder wherever you go. I try to do that every day. And I wouldn't say it's be necessarily because Where's Wally told me to, but the attitude that, 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 uh, that Martin Hanford's books uh, 
encompasses and encourages absolutely set me on the right path. Uh, and so here's to another 30 years of Where's Wally. Uh, yeah, the 60th anniversary edition is definitely something I'll be picking up as and when it comes out. <laughs> as ever guys, until next time, do take care. Bye bye.